I I am literally so nervous to film this video, but Lucy's here to be moral support. <sighs> Today we are talking about progress tracking. I am going to track my befores with you guys. I'm gonna walk you through everything, tell you all my numbers, show you my before photos, everything because again, I've mentioned this kind of like series of me documenting my personal health, weight loss, whatever. My goal is to be super open, vulnerable, honest, not hold anything back. So quick recap, if you're new, I've been dealing with health issues for a very long time, years, years. And really everything went bad when the pandemic started. I feel like that's true for a lot of people, but not only have I gained weight, but I have been dealing with crazy health issues, both physical and mental. Things are getting better now. And so I'm ready to start making some changes and I'm documenting all of that for you guys. We're doing this together. So first things first, my goals as of right now are to get healthy and get back in shape and get back in shape is not a reference to like how my body looks. It's like my actual tolerance for exercise and my ability to like walk up the stairs without getting winded because within all these health issues, I was also dealing with like exercise intolerance to the point where my body, like it was really hard for my body to recover from exercise. And just with all the other health issues, like I didn't feel good enough to exercise even when I wasn't dealing with the exercise intolerance. So I'm very, very out of shape. So primary goals, getting healthy, getting back in shape, and then weight loss is kind of like after. Like we'll get to it, but not right now. But the thing is that I'm at, so I'm at the heaviest weight I've ever been right now. I'm gonna share my numbers in a second, but Anytime I've been a similar weight to this in the past like years ago And it was also at a time when I was doing really bad physically and mentally so the reason i'm documenting my Befores right now related to weight loss is because I wouldn't be surprised if I lose some weight in the process of Getting healthier getting back in shape, even though the focus isn't weight loss and I just because I'm documenting all of this for you guys, I just wanna be able to document my true before. And this is also where I'm gonna share my disclaimer. If seeing my body, seeing my numbers, all of that stuff is gonna make you feel some type of way about yourself, then this is not the video for you to watch. I know the last time when I shared my, I gained weight during the pandemic and here's how I plan to lose it, even though I didn't lose it and I actually gained more weight, um, somebody saw what my body looked like and they were like, they kind of had labeled me as like body positive and they were like, oh, well, if she needs to lose weight, like looking like she does, then what does that say about me? And I empathize with that. I do, but like, that's never my intention. I have always just wanted to be a place for people. If you want to lose weight, if you decide that that's what's best for you, that's, that's my corner of YouTube and the internet. I would never want anyone to feel like they have to lose weight. I would never say that to anybody, but if you wanna lose weight, that's what my content is here for, for whatever your reasons are. Okay, so first thing is I have been keeping track of my weight for the last like week or so, just because I think that a single scale weight is not, like I can't truly know that that's what my scale weight is before. And you'll see, I'll just put a screenshot on screen right here of what my weights have been for the past week. So actually I have a couple of measurements from January. I have. Um, or one from January, January 21st, I was 139 pounds. And then I have one in March, March 2nd, where I was 141. And then my recent weights this month, I have today's Thursday, September 29th. So I have a measurement from the 22nd at 143, last Friday, 142.2, last Saturday, 141.6, Monday, 142.2, Tuesday, 143.6, Wednesday, 144.4, today's 144. So you can see, within seven days, a significant like fluctuate, what I would consider pretty significant of a fluctuation. If you had asked me how much I weighed, I would probably say 141 or 142. So I do feel like these weigh-ins, like I totally could be still getting weight. I don't know. Like I'm trying really hard to eat at least at maintenance in order to make my make sure I can feel good enough to start exercising again. So I could be actually eating in a surplus and gaining weight, but I also kind of suspect that this may be PMS related. I'm 12 days out for my period right now, according to my tracker app, but because some of my health issues are, a lot of them are rooted with um, hormone issues, my PMS lately has been starting like literally two weeks before my period. Like I cry, I've been crying at everything. So this could be bloating. It's very, that's kind of my typical weight gain 
related to like bloating around my period is about three pounds. So who knows, I'll have to keep tracking, but today's the day I need to film this video. So if we're bloated, we're bloated, it just is what it is. But this is why I, for the most part, recommend if you are going to use scale weight to track your progress, you either just need to understand from the beginning that you have to put your scale weight in the right context. If you take a single weight measurement, you can't definitively say that's how much I weigh. Like that's not how it works. So I would encourage you if you feel comfortable, if you are wanting to track your scale weight, do it daily for a, a week just to see how much it fluctuates. You don't have to continue doing that, but it's just to like give you that reassurance that like one scale weight is never like the end all be all. It's not the whole story. And that can just kind of make you feel a little bit better because you put less pressure when you jump on the scale, at least in my opinion. So next up is I did measurements. Also, I don't know how often I'm gonna be doing this. Like I said, my goal isn't weight loss, so I may not track these again for a while because I wanna be focusing more on like the behaviors, which we'll talk about and like getting healthy, getting back in shape. But this is just the purpose of documenting them before. So I also took girth measurements with one of these tape measures. They're like a few bucks, I think at most. You can usually find them like in the sewing department, like at a Walmart or a Target. I love girth measurements because, let me address this actually, because in my last video I said I wanna go get a DEXA scan and I did not go get a DEXA scan. And that's for a couple of reasons. The first one is that I don't have the capacity to like run that errand, like to go out in public and like schedule an appointment and pay money for something that I don't actually is think, like I don't think it's worth doing, which I'll explain. But for example, I'm using my husband's old laptop because mine broke over a month ago and I have not had the mental capacity to deal with that. So there's no way that I have it in me to go get a DEXA scan. Like if I'm gonna run an errand, it should be to go get my laptop fixed and I don't even have the energy for that. So that's one reason. The other reason is that I don't think DEXAs are worth the time or money just in general. They are kind of the gold standard when it comes to body fat percentage, like tracking and like body mass, like figuring out what your body fat percentage and lean mass is and, and all of that, but they're still not all that accurate. I'll link like an article that talks about it, but essentially a lot of what the DEXA is doing, it's, it's an X-ray of your body and it has to make guesses. Like there's some sort of algorithm that makes guesses because it really can't see your entire body. And so it can be incorrect up to like a certain percentage. And that's true with all body fat percentage, like testing no matter what it is. I mean, DEXA is the gold standard. So just increase like the margin for error um, with any other strategy that you might use. So that's why I didn't get it, even though I've always wanted to get one. And I just in general don't think that tracking your body fat percentage when you're losing weight is valuable in the slightest. Like what are you gonna do with that number besides like, like I guess it shows you, it may be able to show you like progress that you're making if it actually is accurate, which it's probably not. Um, and there are so many other ways to be able to see, like if you're lifting weights and you're trying to lose body fat, it can be challenging to like, just look at a number on the scale because you don't know if, like if you're losing body fat and gaining muscle at the same time, the scale may not move, but you are making progress. And then you don't wanna like, feel like you're not making progress even though you are. So I think that's why people typically are gonna try to track body fat percentage, but I think a better option is progress photos and measurements, specifically a waist measurement. Because body fat percentage, it's usually like ultimately like an aesthetic goal, um, unless you have to be under a certain body fat percentage for other reasons. But if we're talking about aesthetics, like there's literally no reason in my opinion to track your body fat percentage. You can see if you take progress photos and you're losing body fat and gaining muscle, you will be able to see that change. And with a waist measurement in particular, you will also likely see that change because your abdominal muscles are not made to get really bulky. And that's the only way that um, like muscle could add size to your waist. And if you're losing body fat, it is likely you'll be losing body fat from your waist area. So as far as like that sort of tracking goes, that's what I would recommend instead of like a DEXA or any body fat percentage testing at all. But I'll tell you what measurements I took on myself. And I, t I have a degree in exercise science. So I took this class called tests and measurements, which literally in we learned how to take these kind of measurements like correctly. So I'll share some like quick tips if, if you're wanting to take girth measurements, but I did neck, bicep, forearm, chest, waist, glutes, thigh, and calf. And for the limbs, bicep, thigh, calf, I did my right one. 
and not my left one. And I indicated that it was my right in my notes because I wanna make sure I do the right one every single time. It's normal to have like asymmetries. And so you wouldn't wanna compare your right from today to your left three months from now, cause that's potentially gonna be inaccurate. The neck one is one I think a lot of people don't take, but I'm gonna share this story cause I think it's really interesting. I do notice for myself that I do gain fat here, like and in my face. Like if you go watch like one of my first YouTube videos ever, I think you'll see my face is slimmer. But here's the anecdote. I had a student in my course who shared her like measurements with me, all of her data that she was tracking. And you can see from like the first few weeks, the only change that she saw as far as measurements go was in her neck. And then she started losing inches from other places. And I say this all the time, but everybody has different like fat loss and fat storage patterns. <laughs> and so some people are gonna lose weight from like one spot and then from other spots later. So interesting measurement to take, not necessarily necessary, not necessarily necessary, not necessary, but just interesting. A lot of what I do also is just for the sake of curiosity, if I'm being honest. So the thing with tracking measurements, you wanna make sure that you can replicate it as accurately as possible the next time. So when it comes to taking measurements, you wanna make sure you're consistent with which side you're doing, if it's a limb. You also wanna make sure that it's in the same place. So with my forearm, for example, I used this freckle. I don't know if you can see it, it's right here. This freckle is my marker for um, where the tape measure should sit in order to get an accurate measurement. For my thigh, I actually took a measurement from my, the middle of my knee to my where my hip hinges, and that was 15 inches, and I divided that in half to get the exact halfway point of my thigh. So those are the types of things that will guarantee or at least increase your likelihood of accuracy because it's, it's easy to like have changes in your measurements, but they're really just you measuring it differently than actual progress. So in my notes, I do have like reminders of, of what to measure. So I also took progress photos, which I'll show you, but the, I saw this thing on TikTok and I had to try it. It's called Me360. It's an app that like scans your body, like with your camera on your phone and then shows you like a 3D model of your body. It's literally like, horrific, but also so interesting. <laughs> and it actually will automatically create girth measurements for all of your body parts. And so I took my measurements manually because I didn't want this to influence mine to see how close they were. But here's my, <laughs> here's my silhouette, my body. She's cute, she's cute. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Um, and it lets you rotate, <laughs> it lets you rotate me. This is my little, this is my body, I guess. Um, the thing that's interesting too is like, it only takes a front and a side picture of you. It doesn't even take the back. So I'm like, I don't know how you know what my butt looks like. Like, nice try. So yeah, there's that. I definitely wouldn't trust this, but it's interesting. And you can take like measurements like in the future and it'll compare them, I think. It also says I'm 33.5% body fat. I don't, I have no idea if that's clue, a clue. I have no clue if that's true, but I obviously like, like I said, I don't care. Okay, wait, this is after I stopped filming. I was just curious. <laughs> I went ahead and calculated a, my Navy Tape body fat percent. I know I said checking your body fat percentage is dumb, but I was just curious. Like I said, I do a lot of things out of curiosity. And according to this Navy Tape method, which is you just use your girth measurements and plug it into like a website. According to that, I'm 31.6% body fat. And according to this chart <laughs> on the Ameri from the American Council on Exercise, according to that, I'm on the cusp of being obese. Like 31% is the cutoff for average. And then starting at 32%, you're obese. I mean, just another example of why body fat percentages like are absolutely just like not even worth paying attention to. Because this list also says that athletes should be between, or athletes are between 14 and 20% for women. When I was competing in my bodybuilding competition, the absolute leanest I've ever been, we were calculating me at around like 20 to 21%. So like if I'm at my absolute like bodybuilding level lean and I'm still around 21, which again, they're not that accurate. So who knows what I actually was like, it, this is just so stupid. Like don't, don't listen to it. Don't even pay attention to it. <laughs> and so then the last thing I did was progress photos. And what I do is I set my phone up on the front facing camera. Like I set it up and I hit record video and then I just take screenshots to get the photos. Um, you can see I took like a front, front facing one 
and then I turn to the side for a side one. I'm not gonna show my back one because, okay, I'm gonna be honest here, I promise I will be honest. It's the one that gets me the most. It makes me feel the least good about my body because um, I have quite a bit of like, what I consider quite a bit of cellulite right now. It's just not flattering. And the second reason, like I'm not ready to show that to you guys just for those reasons, but also I don't know what YouTube allows. Like I feel like for a while I saw people like their videos getting demonetized because they showed too much of their body. So that's why I'm not going to. <laughs> and I know everyone is gonna have a different perspective. Like some people might look at these and be like, oh my gosh, wow, like she's bigger than I thought she was. Some people might be like, oh wow, she's so small. Like she doesn't need to, need to lose weight, like blah, blah, blah. And I know I'm opening myself up to those kind of opinions when I'm sharing this, but I'll just tell you how I'm feeling right now. Most of the time when I look in the mirror, I'm like, damn, damn, she look good. Except for the fact that majority of my clothes don't fit me right now and I'm not feeling good like about my fashion. So my body image is actually the best it's ever been. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily just because like, like I do definitely look in the mirror and I'm like, damn, she looks good. But at the same time, a lot of where my improvement in my body image has come from is like, if I do look in the mirror and I don't like what I see, like that back photo that I don't want to show you guys, it's easier for that to like roll off my back. Like I'm not going to go look in the mirror and like obsess over it and like look at every little dimple of cellulite or whatever. Like I used to, at the beginning of the pandemic, when I first started gaining weight, I noticed this like dimple on my butt of cellulite. And I, every single day would go look at it in the mirror to see if it was getting worse. And then I also noticed like if I bent a certain way, I noticed like a dimple of cellulite, like on the front of my thigh, which I had never had before. And I would literally fixate on, obsessed with it. And now I absolutely don't do that. Like I saw the back photo of seeing what I needed to see. Like it doesn't bother me. My, I do not at all relate my worth as a human being to like the way that I look. Like I have a lot of cellulite, like, and, and like, what does that even mean about who I am or my life or whatever? Like it really is kind of insignificant. So do I have bad body image days where I don't love how I look? Totally. Um, but I can honestly say that like my relationship with my body as far as like how I perceive it is the best it's ever been even though You might be able to argue based on like my history of how I've looked like being in bodybuilding all that stuff Technically, I might look the worst I've ever looked like I could literally care less Which is also why my main priority is getting healthy before ever even considering weight loss So any progress tracking that I do moving forward is going to be behaviors focused, which I talked to you guys a lot about I feel like I mentioned it a lot. It's definitely a staple like in my course Like let's focus on the behaviors Regardless of what your goal is like if it's weight loss if it's getting back in shape if it's getting healthy like if you tie your feelings of success to a certain outcome that you don't have control over for example seeing a specific number on the scale you can't like program that into the scale you can't like snap your fingers and your body weighs a certain amount like if you tie your feelings of success to that you're likely gonna feel unsuccessful maybe want to quit like i don't think that that's a good idea so by being behaviors focused just by doing the behaviors, you are going to feel successful. Like, wow, I feel so accomplished because I did X, Y, and Z this week. And those, the X, Y, Z is what's going to get you to that ultimate outcome. But if you can stop focusing so hard on the outcome, you're going to be way better off, I promise. So that's what I'm going to be doing moving forward. And this brings me to something that I'm actually really, really struggling with, which is knowing whether or not I should be pushing myself more. So I've spent a lot of the last few months like resting, spending tons of time in bed. Like it's honestly been kind of rough. I am feeling a lot better now, I would say probably for the last month. And it's just so tough because if you've ever dealt with like chronic illness, mental illness, all this stuff, it, like I shared in my really long like health update video. I think I was wearing this exact same shirt. This is my favorite shirt. Um, <laughs> I shared in that video that I spent a lot of time over the last couple of years, like almost gaslighting myself into thinking that I was just lazy. Like I didn't have health issues. I was just lazy and that's why I couldn't exercise. That's why I couldn't get my stuff done. That's that's why I never wanted to cook meals for myself or even get out of bed a lot of days. And a lot of my, like that obviously wasn't true because 
when I got all my tests done, I had a super crazy vitamin D deficiency at H. pylori, and then I had my kind of baseline health issues. My cortisol was high, and I think I was experiencing burnout like from Frumpy Fit. I went really hard when all of these health issues were kind of going down and worked really, really hard for like years getting Frumpy Fit going. And so once I finally saw that proof and accepted that like it wasn't, I'm really not lazy, like I have serious issues that need to be addressed, I really had to teach myself to like give myself that rest to give myself grace and that was a really hard thing to learn but i'm real good at that now the second i don't feel good i get in bed i'm like forget anything else that i have to get done like i'm resting and so now it's almost like the opposite where i'm like i'm i'm just in that place it's not the opposite i'm in that place again where i'm like am i being lazy right now because i know i'm feeling a lot better my not all of these health issues are remaining like should I push myself or should I rest? Like it's really hard to tell. So if anybody out there who deals with chronic illness, please let me know if you have any tips and tricks about like knowing when is the right time to push yourself versus when is the right time to rest because I am figuring, this is like completely new to me, but my I'm suspecting that it's time to start pushing myself. So because I think it's ready to start pushing myself, I wanted to create a little accountability group for me, but also invite you guys to it. Um, and let you participate as well. Not only because it will, will help me, but also because I did a poll on Instagram recently and I asked everybody like, what is something that you're really struggling with that you think I might be able to help with? And literally like, I would say, I think like 30 responses had something to do with consistency. It's like a lot of you know what you're supposed to be doing or have a general idea of what you should be doing but you're just not doing it. And I fully empathize with that. Like when I like was competing in my bodybuilding competition, I hired a coach. Cause I just was both times I hired a coach. And the second time I probably could have trained myself and like created my own diet or whatever, but I just didn't want to partially because I didn't want to have to like second guess myself. But a huge one was that I needed accountability. I'm somebody that struggles with accountability. It's hard for me to do what I said I wanted to do. And I know a lot of you struggle with that as well. And like once I get into like, when I did my bodybuilding competition, I worked for my coach like for a while, like months and months and months. But then after that, like I was good. Like my, my habits were set in stone. Like I didn't need that accountability anymore. And so it's also not meant to be something that you need forever, but I'm just excited. Because I was also somebody who always thought that it was like silly to ask for help or like need help. But if you are the type of person who knows what they need to do, you make, like you have all these intentions, like do all these things that are gonna be great for you, but you just never do them or you do them for a little while and then you quit. Like I think there's something, this is something that will be really, really helpful for you. It is gonna have a low monthly cost, but it's the lowest cost of anything I've offered in years. And here's how it's gonna work. Every Sunday will be the day that like your worksheet is due. And the worksheet is just gonna be like asking you questions about how the previous week went and then setting intentions for the next week. And if you miss two posts in one month, I was gonna say one post, but I feel like life happens and that's not fair. So if you miss two posts in one month, I'm going to kick you out. Even though you're paying me money, I'm gonna kick you out. So here's the intention behind that. Like I've had, I've paid thousands of dollars for coaches before and accountability is a huge reason why. So it's a combination of like having money in the game. Like I'm paying for this. I wanna get the most out of it. That's why I'm charging for it. Also because I'm gonna keep track of every single person in it, which is work for me to do. But also you are gonna know that I'm expecting to hear from you. Like I'm expecting to see your post every single Sunday. I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna like it. Like that has, I, I, maybe I'm just a crazy like people pleaser, but like that works for me. Like if I know, like if I know all you guys in the group are expecting to get a post from me, I'm gonna make that post. Like I'm not gonna miss it. And so that's kind of the concept behind it. I am gonna have to cap it at 20 people. So I'm offering it, I haven't mentioned this anywhere else. I'm offering it to you guys first because I feel like those of you who watch my videos, this series in particular, like I would love to be in a group with you guys. You guys can see what I'm working on every week as I'm progressing through my journey and I get to be there to support you guys through whatever you're working on too. It doesn't have to be weight loss. It can literally be anything that you want. So I'm gonna share my first set of habits that I'm gonna be like sharing in the group and working on initially so you can get an idea for it. The first one is, I cannot believe I'm innovating this on the internet, um, showering four times per week. So when I was dealing with the anxiety, the depression, the really bad physical health, showering like was not happening and 
I'm so far out of the habit of it. Like normally when I get in the shower, I take a shower. I'm like, okay, that was not that bad. Like I should have just done it. Um, but I'm, I'm struggling with that lately. Um, I've been showering like twice a week, I think. Literally, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and I, I'm not exercising. So it's not like I'm sweating a lot, but it's, I think relatively humid here in Austin. And so like, I don't feel clean when I go to sleep, which is messing with my sleep. And also because I don't want to shower, I don't want to exercise. Cause I know if I exercise, I'm really going to need to take a shower. And I don't want to take a shower. So I can get into the habit of showering anyway, then I can't use that as an excuse for exercise anymore. So this is like, an example i know this might seem crazy if you're watching this but like this is an example of like focusing on the behaviors and getting good at the behaviors like i if you had told me in the past that like me having a goal of showering every so often would actually help me work out i would have been like what but it makes total sense to me now i hope it makes some sort of sense to you guys my camera started running out of battery and overheating all at the same time and now lizzie is awake um, but I have two more habits that I want to go over 5,000 steps minimum four times per week I might Already just like do that this week without having to try too hard um, But like for example according to my Fitbit last week I had only three days that were above 5,000 but two of those days were like over 8,000 But all the other days were actually under 4,000 steps. So I would like to increase my steps and that's something that will happen gradually. So like it'll be 5,000 steps four times per week and then it might be 5,000 steps like six times per week or 6,000 steps however many times. Like I wanna gradually increase that. And part of it is like, I just don't know, like I don't wanna end up pushing myself too hard because I'm not sure of like where I'm at right now. So I'm gonna ease into it as far as like exercise goes. And then the third one is getting back on track with taking my supplements that I'm supposed to be taking daily. Like today I did not take them. <laughs> I didn't take them. And it might've been because of this whole chaos, but also I need to order, but I'm out of a bunch of them. And these are all supplements that were recommended to me by the dietitian that I was working with for my health. So like they're very important for my health. <laughs> and I don't I'm just so bad at taking my supplements. Like I don't know why. Like why can't I just order supplements and take them? Like why? <laughs> this is why I need accountability. So if you're interested in the accountability membership, all the details will be in the description. It is going to be capped at 20 people. So if you want to get in, make sure you get in. Once it is capped out if it if it ends up filling up i'll put a wait list in the description and then whenever there's new spots available whether it's like somebody left um because you can leave whenever you want it's no commitment like there's going to be a button in your account where you can end the payments yourself like i don't have to do it for you like you can literally leave whatever you want so if somebody leaves or if i decide that i have the bandwidth to like take on more than 20 people i'll email the waitlist and it'll be like first come first serve but i really like the idea of it like being you guys like you watching this video i just think we would vibe you know so offering it to you guys first then i'll probably announce it on instagram and then maybe let my email list know and everything. So hope to see you inside if you think it will be valuable for you. I just really wanna help. And I, I like the idea of having a community and us all doing it together. So that's all I have for you. I am gonna link the playlist that I have for all of these, like I, I think the playlist is called like my journey if you wanna get up to speed kind of on what I've shared so far before this video. But it's seeming like I'm only going to be able to do like once a month updates for you guys here. Unless you're in that accountability membership, then you'll see what I'm working on weekly and how I'm progressing weekly. But yeah, thanks for being here. And I hope that this helped in some way. And I'm excited for myself to hopefully start making some progress. Also, yes, if you noticed, um, this is a mattress up against the wall here. After getting that birch mattress, we this was the one we had before and we're moving into a house soon whenever it's going to be done so we're saving this to put in one of the bedrooms in the house but we don't have a place for it right now so just felt like i wanted to explain myself there okay see you in the next one see you, bye